I would probably want to give um, I would probably want to give like two that I would generate as the principal and give them two, but under sort of an umbrella of categories, you know, so yeah. that it would be based around, you know, learning or teaching or, or something like that in their own career. So in, the, in the field of education. Yeah, like more, but also related maybe more to even the school, like you know, because we're wanting team harmony and synergy. So then you kind of want to know where people's values are under that umbrella as well. Okay. That's what I was thinking. So maybe give autonomy for two and then maybe the client, because of their goals and vision, gives out two. So can you think of perhaps two questions that you would ask then? As um, it might be as simple as, and I don't know, tell me if this is too simple, but something like, what do you value most about teaching? Would that be something that works here or something like, um, um, what is your vision for your classroom this year or for the school? That's good for the 2021-22 year. Yeah. yeah, what is your... Um, what is your vision in making a difference in your classroom this year or to um yeah like oftentimes i'll get them each year sort of on my whatever my focus is so it might be like what are you going to do this year to contribute to positive school culture oh that's mm -hmm. so just tell me like what kind of direction you think the question should be more oriented to and then i can come up with a question you know well, yeah, I, I guess I'm like, there's, it's almost like a group question and then individual question and then looking at, you know, how this is going to stimulate a lot of different lenses. This is going to stimulate convo types and values. So it's kind of, um, you're going to get a whole bunch of different answers um, mm -hmm. from each person, right? Right. Um, I mean, if you need me to drill down and make it specific, like I could ask a specific question about you know, the learning or the teaching instead of the whole school, like it could be that also. Well, and, and maybe, I don't know, like you could, maybe you could come up with maybe two to, or all like, maybe you could brainstorm all the questions you want answered. And then we could have a set of cards that are sort of like, uh, they choose two from a set of eight or 10 questions. And then they choose two of their own kind of thing. And it depends because we can do this where we're where we're answering a whole bunch of questions or we're answering a few questions and we dive deeper into them. I think a few and we dive in. But I mean, as I watch this today, if that helps, then I probably know after seeing it what kind of questions to maybe even generate or think of. Right. Um, and especially because I know my staff, um, <laughs> the less the better because they're going to complicate it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, like they're just gonna, it's like, I could come up with something. They're going to be five steps ahead of me thinking of the next question. So it's like, no, let's just drill down to the basic and then, you know, go further into it instead of adding more to it, maybe. Okay. Oh, more simplicity. Yeah. Because if we only have 45 minutes or an hour to do this piece, and then we want to do the values piece, then that's kind of your whole morning of PD gone. So you want them to come away with something that they see as valuable that they can put into practice right away or into their classroom or how it's going to affect them as a teacher, you know? Yeah, there's a, I do have a takeaway map, which is kind of like mimicking the board that they, they write in and can take away. Awesome. Um, so like in the, in, the, in the box where you have questions, Obviously, that's sort of like where the questions are. So we would have little business card size questions for people to to or index cards to write to write their their question down. So on the board, I don't know if you can see this, Carrie, but there's four rounds. Let me see if I can bring this up on my end here. Just wait a second. Um, I also sent it to you just on your messenger, Carrie, just for you to have a quick. Right. It takes a while to, to bring up the settings for me. So um, 
essentially the board has all six of the convo of the of the cards from the full conscious communication card set so okay. that's different from the hub factor um or some of the other divinations maybe you've done where you have the basic value convo type uh versus now you have the combo the value the convo type and then in the center point let me just bring, let me just bring this up because it's John, this map, it says it's the synergy. Is that what we would use, Elijah, because it's an in, inner group? Yeah, like in the center Synergy's point, you, you have the harmony and the synergy lenses. And that's kind of like yeah. the shared part where... Um, so here we got behind me now. Okay, so if you look in the center, in the center here, yeah. uh, Carrie, we've got the yeah. harmony and the synergy. So that's kind of like the shared place. So it's only uh, each person has a flow and a choice, which is the outer and the inner you. And then you have the convo type and the value. And then in the center point, you have the synergy and the harmony. I have new cards that are sort of like big harmony cards. So you can put the synergy wheel on top of it, um, but, but you don't have that. And then maybe I'll just go. And then on your left hand side, <laughs> this, could, this could be the place of great humor or great uh, <laughs> conflict. It's, a, it's an emotional feedback response. So at the top, you have gone, then angry, and then I guess I can't read. There's a bored, neutral, uh, charmed, impressive, ready to go. Anyway, it's bottom is positive, top is is negative. So the idea being that as a conflict resolution tool, let's say both people are angry. So you'd have a little marker and let's say both start at angry. That's very different, both starting at neutral or both starting at, you know, they're already feeling good. So the idea is that as you talk and maybe get insights that you move that emotional barometer, depending upon if somebody makes a big point or says something which really clears something up, you might, you change this. So both people are giving emotional feedback to each other as they're as, as it's occurring. And then on the right hand side down here below, you have insights, ahas, breakthroughs and level up. And it's just again, a, a kind of a spectrum of, of insight, kind of like being small little things, aha being yeah, breakthrough is you know, you've never seen it before. It's so new. And level up is again, like you're at a totally new level of understanding and towards whatever the question and the answer is. And so you, you would have little counters uh, that as you get it, and that's kind of like how you keep score. So you get like 10, 10 points in insight, 20 points in aha, 50, uh, a, a breakthrough and a hundred, a level up. So at each sheet, you have a score to kind of go, okay, well, this is what kind of happened there. Uh, and then you have the switch cards, which are, a little bit different from going in a sequence of turns where you go like the beginning, you might go, you turn your value card over. Then the next turn, you turn your combo type over. Then the next turn, you turn the choice, the flow, and then maybe the synergy and the harmony. That's just a sequence. <clears throat> the, the switch cards is you have all of those as cards, you turn over the card and it tells you what you're gonna turn over. So it might, it says turn over a flow card, turn over a choice card turnover uh, so so it changes the it creates a more randomness to which order you go in <laughs> so then at the at the beginning you would go to the people um because you have the cars laid out now i think because they've never seen this before you wouldn't want it you could go just pure random and go you know choose you know four value cards four combo types four four uh for flow for four of each card, let's say. If you turn them over and have them go through it, and so you have them, let's say, picking in a row, they have to look at the cards to choose. And I think because they haven't seen them, it, it's a good idea for them to look through them. And then what you're doing is you're, you're changing the options from just the, the whole set of options so now they've gone, okay, well, I've chose those four convo types. I've chosen, like they're, they're now bringing in a conscious choice into this. The divination right. then comes in by you turn them over and then you don't know when they come out to which question. Yeah. So I would suggest yeah. that 
because because there's such a large amount of people, they've never come across it before. Going through the process ahead of time of choosing which one they want starts to give them an idea of what the cards are and what they're getting into kind of thing. Yeah, and especially with, I mean, most clientele, like a staff like this, um, where it's new, many are not going to be as comfortable with, you know, picking divinely. And the other thing is they like control, right? So <laughs> let them pick four or whatever. Like you said, I think that's a great idea. Go through the whole pile and pick their four that resonate with them. Yeah. 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 And then if you have, again, if you have like 15 or something like that and you do it in turn, then it's kind of a bit of a game of going, oh, I hope I'll get the card I want, right? Because, you know, you get to choose every 16th time, the cards are going to go kind of fast. Um, right. So when they're playing, let's say there are 16 people in that group, that's eight pairs, right? Yeah. So eight pairs and they kind of all play it together, but they're at different table at different boards. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you just have enough space in between. So the sound isn't bothering kind of thing, but yeah, you'd have eight people sitting in, in eight couples kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then um, right. Also yeah. the, the timer, like, I guess you can do it with a timer or not. Um, I I've been playing, I have a 30 second timer that we could order. I got them off Amazon and you can get four of them for $15 or something. Uh, maybe from a teacher's point of view, you might get them cheaper, something like that, but you can get, and I've also just got some one minute, two minute, three minute timer. So I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure like with 30 seconds, that's enough per turn oh. and, and adds a bit more of the, the, the kind of speed thing to it. Right. And it, they're playing as a group, but within pairs, right? Yeah. So then we could, like, if we set this up in a bigger space, then I could do it, like, put a timer just on the computer, too, on the screen in the library. And should, then a 30 second it, visual timer. I just go back that and take forth. away from it. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I think part of the fun is forgetting about the timer or. Yeah. Hey, hey. Okay, so you got the questions and then they go, they, they choose the cards. They, they uh, come back to the table and, okay, like how about right now that uh, Kaylee and Lori, why don't you write down two questions of your own and might as well do this towards the visionary hub context. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. And then Carrie, why don't you, you come up with two questions? Like, is that, what do you value most about, do you wanna come up with two questions right now? Uh, from the context of my staff? Yeah. Okay. Carrie, do you have any, um, is there any kind of like communication for high school students or entrepreneurs for entrepreneurial stuff for high school students in your, in your curriculum? Um, they have like, even at elementary school, we do have a career ed, like curriculum for both. Um, so there is definitely an outlet into the high school too. And maybe write the questions on little pieces of paper that you can kind of shuffle up and turn around. Do you, do you have um, some pennies or dimes or anything like that, uh, Lori? Two yeah. and did we just need one? Well, I was just thinking that you need uh, two, one for each of your turns, like maybe a dime. Oh, okay. And then uh, something for the rounds. For the round. And then something for the insights as you get them, if you get them. You might not get any. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's go grab a bunch of coins and then. First, first team to score a zero.
<clears throat> Kaylee, how do you like the look of the game? Um, I think, well, just right now, I'm a kinetic learner. And so I need it to like actually play the game. It looks kind of confusing to me right now, but once I get playing, then I'll have like a better idea. Okay. The background image can change. Like this one is obviously different from the one that you have. I have sort of like, you know, planetary guardians outside the planet kind of thing, but that's something custom designable. I can yeah. change the background. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it, I, I think it could be brighter. That's what I was thinking. I was going to say it's a little busy. Busy? But it is also small. We're just looking at a small one, Elijah. Yours on the board, on the screen looks way better. Yes, it doesn't have like the black. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Like, I like it doesn't have on, this. I like the one on the screen better than this. Yeah, one. just the plain black, Elijah, rather than this stuff in the center here that adds, it looks like brick or something. It's Well, you probably can't see. It's actually a Taurus. And so the idea is that, you know, the Taurus is kind of the, the connection point, but yeah. I can see if it, if it doesn't come across. Anyway, what, what we can do is um, we can custom design them for you and you can choose mm -hmm. uh, which ones you want. Um, okay. If you want like a, a field in, in Yorkton or uh, whatever, like there's a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, so then uh, Carrie, can you give the questions to um, for those guys to write down? Sure. Okay. Uh, what do you value most about teaching? Most about teaching. Perfect. Um, what's the second? The second one is what do you value about teamwork? Oh, that's great. Love it. Okay, so write those down and. Okay. Okay, because these are going to go on to like index card type of sizes, right? Yeah. Okay. And like right now, I, I've got a set of business questions and I've got a set of love questions. Mm -hmm. And again, that the, the questions can be again, custom designed to any contacts, right? So depending upon if it was family, if it was school or if it was kids, or you can create the questions yourself, or I can have a set of questions that kind of work. And so that's again, kind of different than coming at the beginning and coming up with your own questions. So, Again, there, there's always this play between, you know, what you're using that's already there versus what you're going to custom design for what you want. Uh, okay, so so then you would shuffle the shuffle the the questions so you can't see them, and then put them in an order on the board. Well, are they all together? Kaylee has her own questions, and I have my own, right? Yeah. Okay, I've got Carrie's questions, so. And now you can kind of like what I found we were playing a bit, you ask a question to the other person, or you can ask a question to yourself in a sense. Um, yeah. Might as well, let's say, just ask the questions to yourself. And now, uh, do you want to choose or divine the, um, the cut? The, 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 actually, you know what? Let, let's just do it the way you kind of would the teachers. Why don't you turn over the cards? and um, go back and forth in terms of uh, the cards you want. So four of each. Yeah, actually you don't have to go back and forth because there's no real, it doesn't. So choose, let's say um, four convo types. Yeah. Four values, four choice, four fl flow, four harmony and four uh, synergy. Now the, the, the harmony cards, it depends again on the context of the questions because they all might be falling within the harmony card of education. So yeah. you, you might not even wanna bring in those depending on types of questions you're coming in with. I, I, I see what you mean. Okay, well, right now they're, they're picking 
20 cards, right? Because it's yeah. a, con a convo, a choice, a flow, a synergy, and a harmony. Yeah. Okay. So they're essentially, you know, having one option per, like you're getting all six cards for each question. And you're, there's four rounds of seven, seven turns. And each turn, you sort of turn over a card. Okay. But there may be, um, someone may want to turn over a convo card twice in a row kind of thing. I mean, we'll see. We, we, we might need more cards. We might not. Okay. Geez, you know, because I never picked them this way, it's like weird. <laughs> you always go in the easy route, aren't you? Why not? Yeah, I always go the easy route, but it seems to guide me there, the Elijah. Okay. Was it good last day? I think I really need to pick up. Oh, I didn't get a phone call from you. That was the other thing I was saying, Elijah, is like, because the staff won't know any of this, we'll have to do like a, you know, a 15 minute little intro to even, you know, what is choice, the map, flow, synergy, harmony, like, so I don't know if it's a, you know, maybe I zoom you in, maybe we do a PowerPoint, like, I'm not sure, but we're gonna have to give them context before they even do any of this on that day. Okay, I mean, I do have a few videos. Uh, we could, I could make something special for it, or maybe Lori could, depending on, or, um, yeah. Yeah, just some, just something to think about. I know you'd have some great ideas there, but we'll need to give them context. context for sure. Yeah. Kind of like if it's, if it's a choice card in an interview, what does that look like? Just to, you know. Well, and even the terminology, right? Like choice might be easy, but people go interview, what? What are you right. talking about? This is, this is way over my head. That's but what they'll think. think. You just use the words choice. Yeah flow, synergy, harmony with a little explanation. Yeah, like this little card you had, Lori, was great for a little, you know, one-time thing. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just saying the bigger umbrella of like, what are we trying to achieve by doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll be able to put something together, Elijah. Okay, and so then you would, you would put the cards on their specific place on the, the board which might take up the whole board here, but. I know, but we'll just have them back a bit. So, no, I'm putting them, I'm putting them off to the side and then Harmony's. So Elijah, you have a bigger set of Harmony cards, so they sit on each other on. Yeah. Let's see, okay. Well, we'll just go like this, Peter. You can put yours off to this side. I'll put mine on this side. There we go, okay. So what did you do there, Lori? You took each card. Yeah, so I took all four cards, Carrie, and when you look at the map, it's got choice lens, but because it's so small right now, I'm just setting them off to the side. So I have four choice cards face down, okay. four harmony cards, four synergy, which are in the center, but I'm just putting them off to the side for now. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, and then the values and the convos go right in front of me. Uh, just okay. as you see above me, I think you can see better here, Carrie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Positioning. So then you take your dime or whatever for like it's turn one, um, and you and the beginning would also you would both put down your emotional state kind of thing. Are you neutral? Like right now? Yeah. yeah. For yourself. Get off my side of the game. I'm angry. <laughs> Kay Kaylee, Kaylee's already telling what Lori's feeling. <laughs> my side. <laughs> that could be a fu funny thing. Is like. Uh, Guess what the other person is feeling. <laughs> oh, that would be kind of fun. Yeah. So yeah, I've got it just on neutral. Um, okay, so then who wants to go first? I'll go first. 
So I get so turn over your your question card. My question card is: What's the best way to build our shared knowledge community at the Visionary Hub for a starting point? Okay, so now you so this is turn one of round one. You put a quarter or or loony or something on round one. Okay, round one, and that's this. Oh, round one. Okay, yeah. That's right down here, and then seven so each one of you has a pen a penny or dime at one so each time you take a turn you can just uh you move it forward okay okay so your turn one round one so that question now is the question for round one oh, okay okay so now you turn over your the value card that would we would start with the value card yeah Okay, understanding, to value the act or outcome of grasping the inward or hidden nature of things or of perceiving in an intuitive manner. So under now you press the 30 second kind of marker, your timer. 30 second, yeah. Now you answer that question with just the value and you have 30 so seconds. Oh, so the best way to build our shared knowledge community is through an understanding of what the visionary hub is and how people can come into the shared knowledge community. So understanding is a key thing for being able to perceive what it is that we are doing and the reason they're here. That's what I see. Okay. Now, again, if, if Kaylee saw something new or heard something new or had an insight or something like that, she might take a little thing and, and place an insight. Um, or if you did, if not, then you just continue. And again, you're always doing this emotional check of, of you know, is there something that was said did it inspire me or did it create more of a negative vibe in a sense right and that's i guess something at the beginning of the context we should write down of stating you know how each part kind of works at the beginning well right to say that the other person if they have something to say about this understanding part um well now they're going to go to their turn but now they can use both cards like depending like as you go you can use different cards so now Kaylee would go. You'd... So what we did is we each put, so like I got 30, Lori got 30 seconds to see how understanding asked your question. And then I got 30 seconds to see how I see understanding for her question. Actually, so, no. so, so if you do that, then that's going to double the time in terms of, I guess it's looking at the amount of time you have. And if you want to go, because like, again, that's a kind of option uh if if each of you want a turn of answering each person's question i would say fine go ahead or not depending so if, if you guys want to do so that we have, we have one hour and i like carrie's idea of, like we have to build some context to what we're doing so with an hour it's not like we have enough time for both sides i was thinking i didn't even have enough time to get something with 30 seconds mm -hmm. Could you talk or could we take a minute instead of 30 seconds well that's what i was kind of thinking and yeah. so that would be 30 seconds for you 30 seconds for me oh, because you took 25 seconds yeah. Yeah. what are your thoughts there Kit? well let's keep going for now yeah let's keep going because when you do have people in the same work environment i could see that being pretty cool because then you're seeing someone else's perspective on the value of understanding around the question that showed up. So that would make sense in groups of people that are linked into the same field. So even, even in general, because in the hub factory, that's literally what we do. We sit around, each person gets three questions. You see how that occurs, the occurs makes sense for you. And then everyone else gives their input. Gives, gives input. Not necessarily everyone needs to give their input, but like, Sheila said something to me about my hub factor question that really stood out for me because she got the option. Gave you insight. Yeah. Okay. And it gave it, and that does happen at the hub factor. People get insight from each other. And you're right, not everybody has to talk. This okay. Is, okay. So 30 seconds from one or 30 seconds each. 30 seconds isn't very long. <laughs> no. Or I mean it can be extended maybe to admit, like again, we're just sort of testing. Yeah. Um, as more cards go in, it, it might be more. Yeah. Okay, so Kaylee, you're going to give your 30 seconds on on that. Until it's my turn. No, oh, on this 30 side. seconds on what you just said on her her card. 
I think I kind of agree with you. The biggest thing for the visionary health for your question for this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the best way to build our shared knowledge is understanding because like we had a meeting with Andrew yesterday and he was like, I can't help you because I don't really know what you want. And yeah. so you really need to focus on the understanding of why you're doing this, where you want to go. Like, yes, you want to reach 100,000 people, but what are the little targets within that? Yeah, yeah. So the understanding of what is the visionary health. Exactly. Yeah. Or shared knowledge, shared knowledge community. Okay. Okay. So next, next, now it's Kaylee's turn. The question. Um, what do you value about teamwork? And my value is resilience. Um, for teamwork, I see resilience as your support system. So if I am knocked down, I can have my teamwork and my support system to lift me back up where I need to be. And um, and then same thing with someone else. Like if I'm working with James, who's my doubles partner, I he's down, I, I'm down, he lifts me up. Okay. So resilience is the value to value the ability to flow with adversity, capacity to self-organize and the ability for continuous learning. So I see resilience in this field of this question being, what do I see as teamwork is that we're all here together for the bigger picture and all of us have resilience, but we also have each other in a team to lean on to, um, to move to, a diff- to the next step. So I see it as in, in teamwork, resilience being big because each person has to have resilience, but we have to share and allow the other people to help us with our resilience because not everybody has it. Resilience is a big one. Okay, so now it goes back to uh, Lori. You okay. turn, turn over the next card. Okay, so same question. No, a different question now. No, same question. Now you, oh. turn, now you turn over the convo type. Oh, now I'm going to a convo type. I see. Okay. Now that, okay, convo type is explanation. So understanding with explanation to my question of what's the best way to build our shared knowledge community is to speak in such a way that people understand what it is that we're doing. So to have a proper, short, clear explanation so that people are able to understand. Now back to Kaylee, or we're waiting for the 30 second timer. I was waiting for the timer. Um, yeah, I think you nailed it. I think in order to get the shared knowledge a community, you need to have a really good understanding so that you can explain it in a way that people make sense. Like if I were gonna go out to my, I don't know, network, and be like, hey, we're building this shared community, knowledge community. I don't understand it enough to go, well, what is it? How does this work? Mm-hmm. And so having the understanding is key so that we can explain it and um, market it. That's a learning conversation too, which is kind of cool. Okay, now back to Kaylee, I guess, and move, I guess, do your turn. You're on turn number two. Yeah, turn number two, yeah. So we can move to turn number two, yeah. No, it's not round. No, not two. Right, not round two, turn two. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we would remove this thing. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, there's the turn. Yeah. So the turn is on one side, the round is on the other. Okay, so I have exploration to first look into a question or field and discuss it freely without any restraints. I think um that's an important thing about teamwork because i've had really good curling teams i've had really bad curling teams so it's more so i think about exploring what works for me in a team setting or what doesn't work for me in a team setting and having the resilience that if things don't go well they don't give up on the dream so what do you value as teamwork and exploration is to me, exploration is about getting to know each other in our personalities and who we are and not allowing that to get in the way of animosity and stuff amongst teams. So exploring each other in an understanding that is 
that's the type of personality you are, but not to, and to be able to understand that about people. So I think the exploration is in personality when you're getting a bunch of teams together. Teams of curlings, two or four people. I'm looking at a bigger team and to understanding them and their personalities. Okay, now choice. Uh, yeah. The choice first. So choice is lesson, an experience example or observation that impacts beneficial new knowledge or wisdom. So I see in, in this, what is the best way to build a shared knowledge community is to make sure that as we bring the components of the shared knowledge community together, that we're all understanding each other's lessons that we're taking out into the world so that we can share it all in a new way with wisdom. Yeah, I agree. It's all about in order to build the shared knowledge community because it's such a new thing. There is going to be not everything is going to be perfect right away. So there's going to be lessons that are going to be learned in building it. And because it's not going to be perfect on the first try. And you can have lessons in understanding it because okay okay so now we're going to you so choice the choice is first i have repetition um what do you value about teamwork and i again i'm trying to speak to curling because that's just where i have known the team setting the best mm -hmm. um after one year like the more you play with someone over the years, the better that you're going to understand each other and the more chemistry that's going to be there, which is why so many teams stay together. And so having the repetition that builds trust, that builds, that, um, that helps bring value in a good team when you have that repetition. So exploration in teamwork, to look into a question or field and discuss it freely without any restraints, is to create that safe environment and that safe atmosphere for people to explore and understand each other in the teams because we all think differently. We're bringing different things to the table, but we're following kind of in business or in a shared knowledge community, we're all bringing, or in a teamwork, we're all bringing different things to the table, but to be able to explore what each person is bringing, their gifts, explore their gifts. Okay, so now flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so flow is activities. So the best way to build our shared knowledge community to using the energy of all the people that are going to be involved in the um, shared knowledge community and start creating activities, bringing the different components and the different people that would be part of the shared knowledge community to see if they even fit um, the shared knowledge community. And also look at like, and this may be hard, I guess, for the people for the first time of looking at activity lessons, like you're in an explanation um, where you're understanding how to explain the activity lessons mm -hmm. oh, okay. to, to connect the kind of dots between the cards as part of, part of like they build upon one another. Yeah. And that may be something which may be a bit more a bit too advanced for first users, I guess, but just yeah. keep in mind and again if you kind of if anything that you see is new or insightful that kind of counts like as an insight like mm -hmm. uh, it's up to you to i guess you know i i don't know what people consider as insight so it's it's and, and that was a bit of an aha especially in the shared knowledge community question that i had was creating those activities so people are coming in and you're seeing which is okay so then you might put an aha kind of thing yeah there. I was going to say that too, um, having an understanding of what activities you want in the shared knowledge community so you can explain it and having those lessons on, all right, if you're going to do a Enneagram workshop, well, what kind of lessons are you going to have? What kind of activities are you going to do in the shared, law, shared knowledge community so that everyone is benefiting from it? Mm -hmm. okay. Good. So now synergy. Uh, yep. Turn, yeah. Turn. 
Okay. Flow, it's your flow, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. The natural way of connecting to the flow of universal life force without thinking. Um, how does that connect to teamwork? I think that's more so trusting the process, mm -hmm. knowing that instead of forcing teams to happen and instead of forcing processes to happen, let it be, let the universe take over and the way it'll, it's meant to be, it will be. Yeah, and I see flow the same way. Just allow life to flow. Don't don't think you need to control every single situation, but allow it just to flow through and what it needs to do. Now, when it comes to teamwork, again, teamwork could be two people, but teamwork could be 30 people. And when you bring 30 people together, what is the best way to present and do things with people to allow it to flow smoothly and for people to feel that they're heard? Okay, now it's your turn. Synergy. Okay, synergy. What's the best way to build a shared knowledge community? Motivation. The subsystem that looks after the motivation of the various individuals and groups of the system. So I see in the shared knowledge community that as it's being built, that there's continual motivation to keep people inspired into saying, I am so happy to be a part of something that's this big because they, they're continually being motivated. And whatever that's going to look like in the shared knowledge community, the activities and the understanding of what it is that what you're there for. Okay. I see motivated very similar, but very different. I see it in the way for you and Sylvia, actually. Mm -hmm. Are you do you are you passionate about about it enough to bring the shared knowledge community out to life? Are you willing to put in the work to bring the shared knowledge community to life. And so is, is Elijah motivated to bring the shared knowledge community to life or is motivation in that? Cool. Okay. It's your turn now on your synergy. Red? Yeah. Translation. The sub subsystem that translates another language into one own language over the rivers. How do I see this with teams? I don't really know how that works with teams, to be honest. I guess having open communication, and if I'm saying one thing to you and you don't understand it, translating in it always so that we both understand it. Um, that's what I see. I see, see in translation because as we see points of view and points of people, and their perceptions, translation is key. So often how I look at it is, if I've said something to the team members, you have someone or two people in the team to repeat what it is they felt I was saying to them in that form of translation. So it's called drive-through listening, where you repeat it so that you do know they understand what it is you're expecting or saying. Oh, it's my turn? Okay, so harm, no. Oh yeah, okay, harmony. <clears throat> Education. <laughs> the active process of imparting or acquiring particular knowledge or skills as for a profession. So I see education and the, the best way to build our shared knowledge community is for all of us in the community to be educated on what it is each person does within what it is they're bringing to the shared knowledge community. Because you're bringing healers, you're bringing different types of people, but that everybody in that community is aware of the others. So we're all educated. I have... And then you take education with the shared knowledge community. The community, oh, oops. Yeah, you do this one. Um, education and shared knowledge community. I see that that should be a component of the shared knowledge community. Obviously, like the point of having knowledge is to share it with one another. So I think that's the main purpose for the shared knowledge community. So I think it's really nice that you pulled the education part. Awesome. Okay, now your turn. So you're 
valuable to me. Community media. All the media that is located to the community and may include things such as newsletters, posters, blogs, word of mouth, the people who live there. I guess that connects into teamwork because in a weird way, the community is all a team. We all <clears throat> try and support each other when there's a someone with cancer and there's like volunteers needed and donations needed. Businesses support the nonprofit organizations in the community to give sponsorship. Cool. And community media. So let's put it in the context of a team, but a bigger team, whether it's a business or whether it's a school. And for an example, uh, on the teamwork is Habitat for Humanity is in Yorkton. Um, as a team, we've come together with Next Door to say we're going to supply coffee five days a week for the whole time of the bill to all the workers. So community media, and I think it's important for people to understand that that's going on so that the rest of the community will get involved. So that would be the, the end of round one now. Do you feel, how do you feel about ha having to turn over the cards with, with the same question? Did you feel like you wanted to ask different questions or, do you, or did you like that? Yeah, I know that's what I was just thinking because by the time we would finish this with this many questions, because how much time just went by total? Then, well, there's six rounds, times up by a minute each. Mm -hmm. So that's 12 six, minutes. 12 minutes. Well, we just did, I don't know exactly what time we started, but I mean, it, that's, that's already noon, right? Yeah. So, so it's been a lot. It's been but, longer. But I think we only really started in the last 10 minutes of actually doing it. Oh, okay. Because that's what I wondered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm How just because another way of doing it is just you ask you have more questions, mm -hmm. and then you flip over the cards, and then whenever you feel like you want to change the question, you can change the question kind of thing. I would mm -hmm. say less questions. Yeah. Less questions. I would say less questions as well. Because I'm already thinking that three is too many. Three questions too many. You mean? We, yeah. have, we have four, right? Yeah. We have uh, Laura and I wrote down three each. And we'll another thing I feel is questions is too short. Like when that timer's sitting here, it just puts pressure on you going, I got to finish this in this little bit of time. But again, I guess it gets you, especially with a new group of people that aren't used to this kind of stuff, right? And the where I'm struggling mm -hmm. is that when I pull cards, I like to sit and process. And so I can't come up with an answer like that because I like to sit and think about it for a couple of seconds. And so by the time I figure it out, I already have 15 seconds gone. Yeah. And that's just not enough time for me to fully comprehend what I'm. Well, one thing with the, with the, uh, the sand timer, there isn't that you have to watch it. And so when we were playing, um, if you got to go past it, you can go past it. It's just sort of like a baseline. Mm -hmm. and, and then I can't imagine 15 phone timers going off in the same room. So I, yeah, think, I see what you mean. I think yeah. the hourglass timers, uh, and they're, I think that that's easy to get. Um, what about, because four rounds is four questions each. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, I mean, you could do one round, you could do two. I mean, depends. You can choose how many you want, right? So I'm just wondering about the total amount of questions. What are you thinking, Carrie? What do you see? Yeah, well, I was thinking, I mean, from the principal lens, one thing, if I, I visualize, let's say there's a 16 people doing this, mm -hmm. I want to know what these conversations were to help me build my team. So number, I'm going to need to, we're going to have to have some form or something where either this is recorded or there's a recorder process in the game so that I have a way of, because I won't get to all the groups, right? And, and I need to be able to gather that information in order to build a plan based on what I'm hearing. Check your email. Okay. Uh, right, I sent you it. There's a takeaway sheet, which basically is in your email right now and yours, okay. work, where cool. they write down, like basically you can take what, what you come up with and put it on a sheet. Okay, and is that from each group then would do that and each person would do that for themselves? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
we went after this round, we finished talking because it's still fresh in my mind, but after we do four rounds, well, I'm not going to remember what I said in the first round. They can take time. Because how long do they have for this? We have one hour. I would do one round. Maybe two. One or two full rounds, yeah. I think I, I agree. One or two full rounds, and then plus I give you time for like the introduction, how this works, and that gives you discussion time at the end. Yeah. So, so two rounds. Now, it would be different if we're going into somewhere for a whole morning or for four hours. That would be different. Yeah. You really, you do want people to be able to absorb and to record and write down kind of what some insights are that they got up out of the process. And I think Kaylee's right. Rather than doing it at the end, you do it after each round. And what was the insight? What was something that you got from doing this process for this? Yeah, because I could, I could see typically you know how it goes with pairs that people like some yeah. people are not going to be a higher level thinking on some of this stuff and some are going to be lower level they're going to be the baseline of like what's a value and the other people are going to be like Lori and succinctly coming up with in-depth answers and other people are going to be like Kaylee going oh my god I need more time to think before I can speak mm -hmm. so I think we have to kind of take into account we've got different types of learners and maybe the two rounds is enough. And maybe after each round, you know, maybe that's when they do a barometer check. Hey, where are you emotionally right now? Oh. How was that round for you? Uh. And, and, and then let's talk about insights. Did you gain any? Were there any, any ahas? What, what happened in round one? And then do the same thing after round two. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Two rounds. I think that's enough. The first go through, because as I was taught, as you guys, I was watching you guys, I mean, I always talk to my staff about the why we do things. So mm -hmm. I think right off the hip hop, we have to t tell them why we're doing this. Yeah. What are you, you going to get from this? Well, you're going to get you know, greater clarity because we're trying to build team or whatever. And then they can kind of percolate through that with the process too. Like, okay, now how is this going to help me in my teaching again? Mm -hmm. How is this going to help me be a better team member? Mm -hmm. Oh, because now we've seen where each other places value on these two questions or whatever. Yeah. So... Yeah. Maybe, what I was thinking. maybe what they could do is part of I don't know if it's possible maybe they could do a, a phone two minute this is what I my insight about that question and they could and then that could go up on some shared or that could all be sent to you Carrie maybe or maybe it's shared you know, when we were in Vegas doing the work with the Enneagram and stuff with Robert Holden, that's exactly what we did. We took our phones and then Kaylee at the end, Kaylee, I would say, Kaylee, can you give me in a minute, tell me in a minute or two, a little bit about this experience for you. And then I would record the person telling me. Yeah. And I, and I, I hate to play the negative yeah. Nancy, but like, I, I know my staff, there'd be five people to say, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking on video. I don't like that at all. Yeah. So I think we're, it's valid to say we need to re record it. But again, group dynamics, people get bored of sitting. So maybe they have to get up and actually go um, place a sticky note with some of these ahas somewhere. And then that's my board. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, that's a good idea. I was yeah. going to say, because I think like after this round, I would like a break like go get water, coffee. Like I know it's only 12 minutes, but just because I'm thinking it's in, depth. in depth, I need like a moment to reset before I go back. And so you need to account for that as well. And you know what else I could see in a way, I don't know for sure, but Carrie, you think about this. So we've got six tables set up for 12 people. Let's just say, do they really have to go back to the next game board? Can they go somewhere else? Because it's the same questions, right? And then they're just across from different energy each time. They're not sitting with that same person for the whole thing, but they're shifting. So now you're playing it. You pick out a thing. Oh, I'm at game number two now. So the games are numbered or we name them or whatever we do. We name each set. And then, oh, you're going to set uh, learning right now. Or you're going to set uh, welcoming right now. or Whatever we're going to call it. Almost like a little cafe style, right? Yeah, we, we call it speed dating. <laughs> yeah, well, speed dating. So yeah, rather but, than sitting across from the same person, you no, get- I, I like that because we also have, you know, in group dynamics, you're going to have some energy suckers. 
and they're going to look at this game. They're going to be, some are going to be overjoyed and talk and others are going to be very uncomfortable. So then if you can go to another person, you kind of get rid of that energy and you get a new perspective or a new lens from someone else. Yeah. I and think when, that's a, that's a great idea. Switching partners. That way you might be able to do more because there's new energy rebut. Cause if I have to sit here with Kaylee again and go through this whole process with the same person, they're not just you, I know. but with that same person again, it's, it's, I don't know. Yeah. I like it. And if you're asking similar questions, well, then yeah. same perspective. Well, they, they all be the same, except unless what, they have an individual question. That's what we're going to have to figure out. Carrie is. If I'm a negative yeah. Nelly and you're a, a miss, little miss positive, I, it's just an upgrade. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. It needs a name change. The game does? Well, how are you feeling? Because mm -hmm. after this round, I feel drained. Do you? I do. Why, did you, why do you feel drained? I just feel, I don't know, like it doesn't fuel me. Mm -hmm. Like it just burned a lot of energy. Maybe it's called brain drain. <laughs> brain <laughs> Maybe I'm going like too deep and I'm overthinking it, but mm -hmm. I like my energy is mm -hmm. just like, cause I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm kind of doing that too, Kaylee, but I'm putting myself in the space of the people that are going to be embraced here. So I'm excited. So that's where the excitement comes for me because yeah, I'm doing this and I am feeling, I was feeling rushed. I was feeling rushed. That's all. That was what mainly happened for me, but I wouldn't want to come back to this same table. Like you said, you felt drained. I'm feeling her drained energy. I don't want to come back to this table. If this person's drained, I want to go over here to someone that's kind of excited about it. Uh -huh. right? excited about it i just feel drained overthinking maybe probably yeah no I, I think that i mean this is an energy just we're expanding energy we're in people's spaces and so i think the points that we've gone through now are valid to me like yeah i think we need to switch partners i think we need to give you time to talk more in to each other's questions and then add more in between so that there's always a, a recheck a calibration for the group okay now let's check in. Where are we at? Okay, you've got some ahas. They could even share a few of those. For you know? sure. Just like we and, prefer to be you. Like yeah. a footnote. Yeah. I think I know where I'm struggling. Where? Well, because I'm not a quick thinker. Like I need to sit and because I'm trying to rush myself mm -hmm. while I'm bringing more energy because I'm trying to like get oh. the dancers out in 30 seconds. And that's. What do, you, what do you think about taking away? Like maybe there shouldn't be a timer. Like, I mean, a timer can be there for some context, but. The thing is, I guess like with a minute timer, then you've got, the, the thing is, is it's got to go back and forth within a certain amount of time. So that's why the timer sort of important, but it may, 30 yeah. seconds may not be, it maybe Does it have to go back and forth? It does, like, again, this can be custom designed so many ways. Like we haven't, like there's going to be different ways to do, like I can see maybe 10 different games. Each one has a different set of parameters. And yeah. this is the first time testing it. So. And you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing this game like this and another one going this way so that there's four people at the table. So you're really getting more insight from rather than just two people. Yeah. You're getting the insight of four people at a table and then you can give them a little bit more time. So for the second round, why don't we try not having it with the timer, but keeping it to like an appropriate amount of time. So like, let's say it's a 20 minute game. I have 10 minutes to do my thing. And then we flip and Lori gets 10 minutes to do her thing. And so I'm focusing on my mm -hmm. thing. I'm answering all the mm -hmm. questions. And if I need to, a minute to sit and think I can, so I'm not burning all my energy trying to get my answers mm -hmm. out like that. And then you only do your cards. And then you can get at the end or, and if you have something to say, you can say, yeah, like, oh, like okay. 10. And then, yeah. so I pick all my seven, six cards yeah. and then we focus on Lori and I, then we just focus mm -hmm. on Lori's instead of going back and forth. Cause I think that was draining me too. Cause yeah. I'm trying to think of yeah. Lori's answers. I'm not trying to think of my answers and I just yeah. don't work. Like and then that. you're trying to shift, right? Cause you're thinking exactly. about a mastermind or a, or a shared knowledge community group. And you're thinking about teamwork and both of them are teamwork, but still. Yeah, so, so what, sorry, I, I'm just thinking after Kaylee said that, so what if we went somewhere in between? So maybe like the first person, like we don't have the rebuttal, basically just Lori say her thing and her insight, 
And then, because also the, on the flip side, I'm thinking if Kaylee's going to do something for 10 minutes, I'm mm -hmm. tuned out because I can't yeah. listen to somebody for 10 minutes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I Not agree. like, you know what I'm saying? So maybe it's, and maybe that's when we go back to the barometer check. So after Lori, as example, says her first thing, okay, this is the insight I've gained. And then we go, oh, was there barometer check? How are we feeling about that? Is Do you have any insights? If not, move on to Kaylee. You know what I mean? I'm just about to say that. So what if we go out and just moving these cards over here just for the life of it. Let's say I pull simplicity and I say, oh, I think simplicity fits into my goal because da, 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 da. And Lori can be like, yeah, I still like same thing that we were doing, but we're not keeping it to 30 seconds. And then I will flip my next word. Okay, so now I have potential. This is what I see, what you see. The potential so then you're keeping, that. and then so then we would keep going for the six. And then Lori would go, oh, I think abundance. Lori, this is how Lori sees it. And then, oh, okay, I see, I know you, and I know you like question. This is how I see abundance for you. So then we're still keeping it focused on one question. But getting insight for both, so you don't have to zone out for. Like, and not even abundance yeah. for you, but abundance towards for the, the question, question about teamwork. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I and I think that's a big part of it. Like, if if the people are invested in the question, they're going to be more engaged in in wanting to have the response, right? So in this case, maybe you know, maybe we're not as invested because we're not part of the visionary hub or we're not part of a team. But if we have questions that they're all going to be invested in. I think that will make sense. And then maybe there's even an option, like that'd be fun. I'm thinking of kids, like if you had the option to pass. So it's like, Lori talks, Kaylee doesn't want to do a re rebuttal. So she just says, oh, I'm going to use my pass card. And then we go right back. Yes. That'd be fun. We did that in the Enneagram training. You weren't forced to have to say anything. You could pass round one and then you just, because then you get more comfortable. That's a really good like, cool. Give them one pass card that they could use in the two rounds if they wanted or something. Because even community media, let's say this card shows up, right? Some people go, what? But we also didn't take time to read the definition on the card. True. Which I think yeah. is key. So yeah. what we do at the second <clears throat> round and we do just one section at a time for one person and then we flip. We don't have a time thing, but like just keep it to like, 20 minutes and we'll see how that feels because I know like my energy is back I'm sure yeah. you can tell my energy is back and so yeah. I'll be able to tell whether or not I'm still feeling like absolute debt mm -hmm. or if I'm feeling happy but lucky here's another thing I see so if there's two questions rather than Lori having two questions Kaylee having two questions we have two questions period oh. but different perspectives from the same question so we have a question about teamwork get rid of the visionary hub and Kay Kaylee pulls out resilience and I pull out respect. That's, 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 that's yeah, that's the ticket right there. That's, a, that yeah. to me, you got one question, but two perspectives coming at it through. So let's go, yeah. let's do the one question. One of the school questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but it's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. What do you value most about teaching? We're all teachers, right? Maybe we're not certified on this thing, but we all teach in some capacity. Okay. Okay. So do we want to? I'm rotating my cards. So yeah, me too. Ones. Me too. Okay. So what do you think of that? Because then it brings two different points of view, view to uh, one question. And we can have as much time as we want to yeah. think of the but, answer. That's right. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to like that better because it might be hard to go between the two questions and then that's the overload on the brain. I think that was my overload too. If I had to say overload, my overload was, oh, I'm in shared knowledge community. Oh, I'm in teamwork. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And you're yeah. trying to get yourself revamped. Yeah, I was okay. just trying to think of yeah. what I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have two questions. We'll play a game with two questions, one at a time with two different perspectives. All right, so let's try this round. Okay. Okay. You want to go? Oh, yeah. these can be like reset. Yeah, we don't really need these. Okay. So there's no timer. There's no nothing. We just know we've got 20 minutes to do this. And whoever's facilitating is keeping track and walking around and just giving the people a little bit of what they may need. Oh, that's cool that you pulled resilience. Wow. 
and then you just sit there and listen to them, right? But you just engage and engage the people instead of them just sitting like this. Okay, okay. So I'm setting it for 20. We're, oh, 20 minutes, yeah. So, you know, we have A and B. A and B, and A takes so much time, and then B takes, but I think, you know, we both, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn over. So what do I value most about teaching? Imagination. Now, imagination is a vivid, imaginative conception or anticipation. For me to teach, like being around children, I was just around children for a week, and to me, the biggest part of it was using imagination, not just me as the teacher using imagination, but really embracing and bringing out the imagination in the kids so that we're, they're really shining their light. You know, I remember I read, uh, I had to do a, um, a poetry analysis on a poem called The Key to the Kingdom, and it talks about imagination mm -hmm. and how when you're kids, you have this key to the kingdom and you can go to like... Um, you're a pirate on a pirate ship sailing the seven seas or you're in a jungle in a zoo. And then eventually as you grow older, you lose the key to this kingdom because as you grow older, people tend to lose their imagination and they're not as creative. Even just watching the kids this week, like the one girl who wants to build aqua cars, like never, never in my wildest dreams, but I'm like an aqua car, yes, but like an aqua car made off of aqua never would have thought of that and just their creativity was honestly powerful okay so your value i pulled simplicity i think one thing that i always respected about my teachers and when i'm trying to teach things is make it simple because as soon if you can teach it to me in a simple way i will understand remember it for the rest of my life but as soon as you're teaching me calculus and trying to figure out the um the dividends of whatever i'm never gonna remember that and i like simplicity around the value of teaching because it takes there's way less complexity and i think you engage people more when it is simple because the outside world is so complicated so if we can keep simplicity in here as teachers i think that would be that's really important okay so now convo type Okay, brainstorming. To generate ideas to solve a problem or improve a product or a gift. So as a teacher, I feel us coming together with our imaginations, the value of imagination, but coming forward and sitting as a group and brainstorming and doing that on a consistent manner is very important because we never know that person might be kind of quiet, but we're doing a brainstorming session a conversation, a brainstorm could bring something out and creativity out of someone that we would least expect. Um, for my brainstorm, I would say it's really powerful because you need to be able to teach the kids in a way that they're actually going to remember. And so Tamara and I, for the kids camp, we sat down and we were like, okay, well, what do like fifth graders like among us? And so what did we do? we created an Among Us themed day and the kids absolutely loved it. They talked about it all week and we taught them business in a way that's simple for them to understand through a brainstorming session that we have. Cool. Okay, so choice lines. Um, oh, sorry. friendship. Friendship. Um, friendship, to share information with your friends in the process of companionship. Um, I think something about teachers or teaching and even because my mom works in a school and she's very good friends with all of her teachers and she's created lifelong friends because of the school she worked in and so I think with teaching even I'm sure Carrie you're friends with some of your teachers that you met in college and I'm sure because of the teaching and the passion of teaching you create lifelong friendships mm -hmm. yeah I think friendship is a key conversation to have because it's what are we learning? What are the experiences that we're getting through? Us as teachers, you know, whether it's friendship or whatever the context is, um, friendship is important in, in no matter what we're doing, whether we're in the form of teaching or we're out there amongst our friends, but actually building friendships. Can I have a pause? Can I have a pause? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. This, is, this is way better already. Mm -hmm. Okay. like a thousand times better because I'm already gaining more insight really quickly. But as you were working, I thought another element we can add into the group is when this 
first round is done or you're done with your partner, how cool would it be to take all of the cards so that everybody could see what the other teams had? Like right? so, so then, for example, I don't know, like maybe it's, okay, this group, what were all your values, choices, harmonies, what were all your cards? Maybe they placed them somewhere. Maybe we take a picture of them. I don't know. But then that allows everybody now to know as a staff, Oh my gosh, look at these guys valued friendship. Wow, so do we, or I don't. And that that's what I need as a principal. Cause then I know my team right there. Exactly. Oh so my goodness. Okay. So everyone shows their set of chosen cards. And I think you're right, Carrie, to get a picture of it. We're, Something we're like even, that. Like we've spent about a minute-ish a question, but yeah, we pulled four cards and it's been five, four, nine. Yes. And yeah. so, but it's just a matter of focusing on one question, pulling mm -hmm. two cards, saying, okay, this is how I see this. I like, yeah, this mm -hmm. is like, and you can feel my energy there. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can mighty, you know, whoever specific, like when we're facilitating, we're monitoring the room and we're saying, oh, they're still, we're already in eight minutes into it and they haven't even pulled a choice lens yet. And then you kind of just go, oh, you know, can you get on to the next one? And maybe they're in, I don't know, they, they're going to have to know ahead of time which order they're going to be pulling their cards yeah. in, right? No, I think, they'll, I think there'll be a lot of value in the whole group seeing what the other groups have done. Me too. Me too. All right. Okay. So, and then everyone shows as a group. And then they're all seeing because then they're seeing, oh my gosh, there's the value of imagination. Oh, there's simplicity. Oh, that's the values that we, we hold in teaching. But you know what? I hold that value in my life when I leave the classroom and I leave the school. Yeah, and then as, a, as the principal, then I, I can have, almost have a list now yeah. of like, oh gosh, look at all the values of my staff. And I might've thought their values were different. So the superintendent group, the director's group, same thing. Wow, yeah. as a province, what do we value as directors now? I like it. I love it. So they're only going to be choosing two because we're only doing two rounds. So that and they go through those values cards ahead of time and they're picking two that stand out for them. Okay, can I hit resume again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're doing the choice lands. Okay, so choice is insights, the after outcome of grasping the in and it inward or hidden nature of things or a perceiving in an intuitive manner. So I see insights as my body talking to me. If I'm, when I'm teaching, I want to pay attention to what insights I'm getting about the kids that I'm teaching, as well as the people that I'm working with and the other teachers. So they have insights so that I'm not judging and I'm not, you know, I, I'm using my body more almost as to, to gain those insights. I see it the same way, but different. So I saw insight as, okay, how, what is the best way to teach the kids at the entrepreneurship camp while figuring out their favorite game, Among Us? How do I apply Among Us to business? And I think because I did that and because I had that insight and I used my mom, who works in a grade five classroom, she said, use Among Us, mm -hmm. people are obsessed over it. Mm -hmm. I got that insight so I can teach them business in a way that they're going to learn. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, and then habit. An acquired pattern, behavior pattern regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. Um, something that I value about teaching is that it's a habit, but at the same time, it's not a habit. So like, um, here, I'm just going to pause this. Yeah, I think this is way better. I like this. A lot. I don't feel, I don't feel nearly as drained as I did the first round. I feel a lot of energy. Mind you, I'm half done my coffee, but still. Shocking. It's way more naturally flowing and allowing of the, the real cadence between people. And I don't feel pressure that, oh, I have 30 seconds to read the card, figure out what I'm going to say and get it out of my mouth the going 
oh, I hate that noise. And then it makes it easier on whoever's timing it because then you can just have a big wall clock or like on the screen 20 minutes. And then just leave it that. You know, I think of like a, a totally different use of it is if you had, let's say a certain question and then every 30 seconds you flip a different value and you do like 10 values in a row and then you come up with the idea and you're training your mind to see something. It's a totally different way of doing something, but. I don't like that one as much. But I'm someone like even when we were doing our full map, like I sat there for probably two minutes figuring out, okay, what does this mean? How does this connect? And then I say it. But just as like I've never been able to make an impulse decision decision because I need to step back. Okay, this is what's happening. And if any time I've made an impulse decision, it's turned out horrible. And so like that's something I've learned is I need to step back, make sure I'm making the right decision for myself. So that I'm not screwing myself over. So you're saying like probably on the wall, you'd have a big sheet of all the people, the values they took, the combo type they got, that kind of thing? Yeah. And, and maybe one from each group, and then we could drill down to people. And then as the as the leader of the team, I, I can see then what everybody's values are. And then you can start to streamline activities and, and leadership roles even based on what the values are, right? If you ever. Because I've done it like this, but not like this. Do you know what I mean? Like I do these things, but not in a formalized way. So this would make it and much more valuable because instead of the onus being on the principal, the onus now is on the team because they've seen each other's responses, right? This That's takes a I would, yeah, like um, I would take all of that on me and go through it and filter it after the first week, but then the rest yeah. of the people never saw what other people put. Exactly. That's called team building, man. And then maybe Elijah could make some sort of map that you can keep in your staff room. Oh, yeah. I don't know how, how that would look. I don't know. Yeah, because there's going to be 30 people. I'm not clean up, but like mm -hmm. something. And maybe the map, maybe that map will be just, so they're going to have, there's going to be 30 people going through it and they're going to have chosen two values each. Because we're going to have a couple decks of values cards because there might be two people that really want the imagination value. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then once all those values are chosen, what we did at LR Future, it was, of course, it was a smaller team, is everybody picked a value. So Kaylee and I, for example, sitting here, we've got four values, simplicity, respect, imagination, and whatever else, resilience. So now we as a team go, oh, out of those values, what is something that we as an entire team hold near and dear for three of our top values. Just like you did, Elijah, for those kids when they have their business idea and you turned those values into their superpowers. Yeah, or maybe like take the cards that they've chosen and turn it into an individual map that they keep in their classroom. So oh, then on, oh, so then on the days they're like, oh, why am I teaching? And this is stupid, da, da, da. They look at their map and they're like, that's why I do what I do. That's, That's why I do what I do. So that would be 30 maps. Take a picture. Right. We could take a picture of each person and have the values as their eyeballs uh, or below them. <laughs> everyone's picture. A template done. It's just a matter yeah. of like inserting. Them. So, so the way that we're going through this and talking right now, yes, a game board's cool because it gives some direction on here. But do we, like, I like the idea though. I really do like having the, gone, angry, irritated, impressed. I kind of do like that because we go into moods within a day, even in levels of personalities. I think that's kind of cool just as an observe, just to observe. So going through this, like, you know, how do you feel going through this round? And then they're looking at these words and going, well, oh, this is really interesting. Well, and I'm already like bingo. Um, like a big thing that I did last year in the division push and it's Canada wide is about our mental health, right? Yeah. So this is a, an, a tool that we could partially sell under that guise, 
Mm -hmm. of because this is what I'd say to my staff. This is what I'm thinking already. We teach self-regulation with our kids. Mm -hmm. Are you regulating yourself? So when we start today, where are you at on that barometer check? After the first round, where are your what's what's your emotional state? So we yeah. can integrate learning the team, but also being aware of our emotional mm -hmm. yeah. I regulation. Think, I think that's really good to connect in mental health and those feelings that are on there is excellent. Yeah, and, and I just use it the words that we use at school, we just call it self-regulation or co-regulation. So this whole activity is really a co-regulation activity. So we wouldn't even have to throw in the mental health because some people get triggered by that, but we would know that. And if we need to go into corporations, we can sell it that way. That's exactly, because we know that's a big part of life. Mental like, well-being or whatever, emotional regulation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, or whatever we want to call it. What's up? I think I just found, found our thing for the hub. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, just taking, not even hub factor doing this, bringing this into corporation. Mm -hmm. And then from there, oh, you want to learn more about this? Well, you can come in on your own time and do a whole map. Yeah, because can you imagine being able to go into corporations? I mean, not everybody can have all their people in one place at one time, right? But you can still, like we just said, they people, when they come back to this game, they take a little break and they come back and then they don't sit in front of the same person again. So for both rounds, they're with somebody different, right? Sure. If yeah. you, and just to show you the map behind me. Oh yeah, okay. Is the takeaway. Oh, that's nice. There's it, there it is. Perfect. So yeah, that's, right. that's, that's it. Can put in their classroom. Yep. That's awesome. And then there's the, you can't see it, but the question, the player name, player two, and then your emotional that you start, emotional that you end. And wow. then on here, you you draw in, you know, which combo type and any insights and anything that you get. Well, what if we just use that? Do we need the game? Oh, we need the game board because we want the emotions on the side. But And I think the, the game board sort of just structures the, it just gives yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. It structures it. Now yeah. that I understand it, I like the game board. Yeah. I still don't necessarily like the background. Right. 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 Well, like if it's just like a plain, simple background. Mm -hmm. Like that, like behind them, more simple. Like, Not like that, like what he had first, but like just the black, the plain black was very nice. Mm -hmm. but like this is just a little too much mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if you guys come up with a specific photo that you want, um, okay. I can I can pop anything back there. So yeah, so, Lori. <clears throat> what if we did like a blue background with like just planetary that's what I mean. and the hub logo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that? Blue background? Blue, back, blue background with the hub and the planetary guardians on there. You want planetary guardians on there? Well, I don't know. It's on here. It's yours. Well, like, I mean, that's the thing about the rebranding, right? I mean, you're rebranding all the planetary guardian new paradigm toolkit with the hub. So it depends on how far you want to go with planetary guardians within what you're doing or you just want visionary hub as a brand well visionary hub would be because it's been customized for us but it's really the planetary guardians that are the like even if it's not as big of a name but it's somewhere on there I would they on. made it and presenting it for us to, like hasbro somebody makes hasbro's game right and it goes out as my fund companies had the game of monopoly but it was customized and made specifically for them, but it still said Hasbro on it because they're the ones that created it. Yeah, and and again, I'm sort of, I've been going on the business model of, of having distributors that rebrand it. So then it, all the things I've been sending you haven't had Planetary Guardians on it, it just has a Visionary Hub, but this is like a flagship product. And again, you may go, we want the Planetary Guardians. You know, we feel like we are Planetary Guardians. So it's, it's more up to you. We are planetary guardians. We are the wayfarers. We are the mavericks, Elijah. We're sitting right here right now. So let's show that to the world. Okay, great. I think, what do you think, Carrie? Yep, it's good. I think having both is great. Have your little visionary hub piece and have the... Yeah. Okay, do we need to play the rest of the game? No, we probably no. don't. No. I like the idea too of people like the insights, you know, just taking that little bit of time because then you're really getting the feeling of 
that other value and what how it's feeling for you. I like those words you use, Carrie. You know, it doesn't have to be mental health, but it's self what regulation and co-regulation. Yeah, co-regulation is you within a team or a group or a partner. Self-regulation is yourself. And then they're going to learn this five spaces map because that's our other session. Elijah is going to be the five spaces map where they learn one-on-one -on -one space, group space, community space, um, all that. I did it yesterday with Sylvia, so I have that pretty much down pat. This was really good. Yeah, so, this was great, you guys. So each person will have two values in front of them two choice lenses and they've chosen them ahead of time. So that's what even makes it better. They're not doing it divinely. They're doing it ahead of time. We can still have them choose a, no, choose two. How does it fit into the question that's being asked? Then you know, like I chose connection for a reason and I chose insights for a reason because it links to me and how I feel. Mm. So you're right, Carrie, it'll give you a lot of insight about your teachers. Oh yeah. Oh. Well, then also the five communication spaces map, you're doing it's values map, right? So you're yeah. also seeing specifically they're choosing five values that are just straight from them. So that's what you also see. That's one you really want to see. And they get that map and they write their values right into it with their seven lifetime goals on the backside. Or thinking of doing something, Elijah, kind of creating a sheet so they have a worksheet for their seven lifetime goals and just give it a fanciness to it. Okay, I can do that. And one goal being so out there that you couldn't even imagine it would happen, but put it out any, put it there anyway. Impossible. Okay, I'll, yeah, I, uh, I'll make that for you. Okay. That's just a little exercise for the end of the spaces map, Carrie. So that they're thinking bigger in, in teaching and being teachers and what life looks like. If we decide, yeah. you know. Now, because, Carrie, do you want any, like, do the teachers want or need any takeaway sort of things, like from the toolkit in terms of, let's say, a deck of convo cards, or is there a budget for that, anything like that? Or Well, that's a good question. Or would the school want a set that comes with part of the yeah. toolkit? Yeah, that's that's another good thing. Let me let me stew on that a little bit. But I yeah, I could see us doing something like that. It's just a matter of figuring out if it's an individual thing or a school thing or it yeah. maybe both. I don't know. No. Oh, and Lori, something mm -hmm. that you could do for the teachers is if they want like their own individual map or whatever, give them a discount. They get they get they know that they can do individual maps if they want to. Is that a something, Carrie, that would be okay? Yeah, like, well, like I said to you, just with the conflict of interest, we'll have to do it in a, a roundabout way. But I mean, we'll, we'll let them know some way that what those options are for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And whatever that is, whether it's in a takeaway with a little description, like that card that you've got that you just yeah. have that Sylvia created, it could be something as simple as that. And they go, exactly. Oh, more and, and, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great, you guys. I, I appreciate that. Was great. The second round was what we needed. This was really good. This and we have now Lori and I, we can just sit down and then maybe with Elijah at some point, once we've got our format for that day or that morning, and then we can go over with Elijah what else we might need to consider. Yeah, yeah this was really good. Because we're going to get like, we, we talked to Elijah yesterday. So we have to like, we think we're just going to lap, you know how these are just laminated because it's got to be on a big thing like this. For now, we're just going to laminate them to use them for this exercise for August, but we'll see what we need to do. Okay. In your day, Elijah. Yeah, this I think that may be the best anyway. Yeah, I think so too. They're easy to transfer. You can go into 30 people, you can go into 50 people even. Honestly, you can grow into groups of four people if you want. Yeah. But yeah. And then we just have to put them into our container. Sylvia's already got ideas for containers. So that could be something when you go through this process, it comes with, or, or you can for this option, buy a deck of cards, which is actually six decks. So you get the convo, the value, the harmony, the all the cards. What if somebody goes, well, you know what? I like this, but I just like values cards because I think those are key that I can use in my school or my household. 
things to think about. I would buy a values book. Of course. Like who yeah, would? No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So Carrie, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys the question, the things that I wrote down, and I'll just kind of put it into a word document. Okay. Kind of what I see is the process. You do the same, and then we'll just kind of tweak it to create a bit of a cur curriculum around it or whatever. So that is kind of in steps, right? Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, because Sylvia's not here, so we want to kind of create it. And then we'll be doing quite a few more. Emmanuel's already said he'll come and play a game so that he can get a feel because, you know, we'll get people to do this. That's no problem. Just to practice. Awesome. I love that map behind Elijah. Elijah, that is beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of. So you want a blue background? I'll, I'll make a custom design one for you and send it today so you can print it out and uh, okay. see what you think. Yeah. We'll go from there. Okay, and then we'll have these little marker things if we need them. I don't even know if we're gonna need them because we're just doing two rounds and we're just setting a time for. Yeah. X amount of time. And then the cards, the questions, you know, we'll have some type of nice little cards for the questions to be written on. What does switch card mean, Again, Elijah? If you'd have, let's say, a flow synergy, like all of the cards with it are there, and you just kind of turn the card over, and that's the lens you switch. Oh, okay. As opposed, because I think we need to give the people some sort of sequence of order, like say the values, the, the combo yeah. type choice, flow, synergy, harmony kind of thing. So they're going here, 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 and to the center. Yeah. Like I know you've got all this already set, but we'll be putting the synergy and the harmony cards in the center because we're, they're not bigger than each other. So they can't go on top of each other, but we can put them side by each in the center. Yeah. Well, I'll, by, by then I'll, I'll get you a deck of the other things. Um, oh, the bigger ones? Yeah. Okay. So we would need, we'll probably... I'm thinking for those, well, it's only 12 people. So yeah, I think we're good with one day. And, I, and I'm not sure, again, like the, the, the harmony lenses really throw the answers because they're at that societal level. That's what I'm thinking. I and, say just use synergy. Yeah. You don't even use the harmony ones. Because when you looked at that, so what was it? Media that, what does yeah. that even mean for people? I know, it, it throw, it's, it's a little too, these are more personal things. Yeah. Yeah, because the purpose of this is to build a team and synergy is all about the inner group. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Ooh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Colleen from the Rock said this morning, we had a meeting with her, Emmanuel and I, for some work we're doing. And I told her, you know, we want to take, she's looking at it, she goes, every time I come in here, I'm just mesmerized by what I see. And I said something about, you know, getting into schools, maybe, maybe we'll be in Regina, Saskatoon. You know what she said? Why are you not in the schools in Yorkton? <laughs> she says, I got connections. Her husband's a teacher, I think. Oh, who is and it again? It's Colleen from The Rock. So I don't know who, what's your last name? Hofford. Hofford is her husband. Oh, Scott. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, he's at Sacred Heart. They're, yeah, the Catholic school system. And she said, who is Holinati now the superintendent here? What, like, I don't know him at all, but she goes, we need to introduce this to him so it can come into all the schools, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got it in there. I'm really good friends with his wife, so. Are you? Yeah. <gasps> Elijah, this is gonna go into the schools first and then I see us stepping into healthcare in some capacity because we can talk to HR in the healthcare and really start working with the nurses and like the call, the Lonnie's and the people there that say, how do I bring my best self to work? So it's not a dream going there. Yeah, no, for sure. This is awesome. Thanks, Elijah, for making us that map behind you so that we have our lunar cycles in order for what's going on. Because at the hub this month is health and well-being is our theme for the month of July. So everything that we post is linked into. So if I'm doing a post about money, it'll be money in relationship to your health and well-being. Money in relationship to relationships in your life. You know, that kind of theme. So Elijah made us a map like this so we can just constantly go around and say, these are the themes forever and ever and ever, all based carry around the circle of life. 
Well, that's awesome. <laughs> it, everything's in nines. It's crazy. That's awesome. Mary, Mary do, you, do you have themes in, in what you're doing? Yeah. Or is it linked to holidays kind of thing? Or um, Yeah, I mean, not really so much themes. <laughs> other than the things that are mandated for themes right like at school we have a kindness month and then there's always something you know the the aboriginal storytelling month like those kinds of things so but in terms of like what the principals get it's all mandated down right it's like okay well this pd you have to talk about whatever mm -hmm. and yet we do have some autonomy right like that's how i can pull this off because i have some autonomy for what i want to choose for my professional development for my staff every division runs it a little different like staunch catholics in yorkton it was very directive right this is what you're doing from nine till twelve oh, oh how did you handle it well you know me I go know. around go under go beside mm -hmm. do whatever you have to do to do it but don't do it <laughs> but don't do it yeah exactly well, you, you had to, but just in a different way. So, yeah, I mean, those would be basically our, yeah, if in terms of themes, that's kind of what comes down from the school. Yeah. For me, I just, yeah, themes, I do a, a weekly, like a day of the week theme, all with the kids every day. So Monday is Mindful Monday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday is Let's Talk Tuesday, which is all about mental well-being. Wednesday is Wednesday Wellness Day. So we just talk about anything emotionally, physically, mentally, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Thursday is thankful Thursday. So we do gratitude. And then Friday is fun Friday. We do jokes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. See, that's excellent. Like, why can't every school just structure that way? Elijah, when Carrie, when they were saying, yeah, I got to put those sticky things on the floor to stay whatever 12 feet away, she got them to make here. Weren't they hearts, Carrie? Yeah. Be kind, be mindful, be, you know. So yeah, they're still got the idea that they they're staying at the sticker distances, but they're getting something out of it instead of going, oh, look at this, stay 12 feet apart. It's a negative and a positive. One is in fear and one is in love. Yeah. And we never fault the rules anyway, but this is being recorded. So if anyone says that we did, we did. Yeah, I know, I know. But we don't have you know to what I mean. <laughs> yeah. We can always cut it off before that because please, please do. Yeah, please do. I know that's what I told Elijah. Like if I'm having a conversation about that rehab center they want to do out in the which we call it, and I'm naming name, do not record it on the to the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a conversation with James Archer again. We touched in today. Oh good. Yes, he he, his brain is going corporate wellness retreats that's he's i said you give it that you get a 10 out of rating you put rehab center because you're working with addicts you get a zero rating because they just think the, and yet i said the majority there's a lot of people in the corporate world and in the business world and everywhere that have addiction have trauma they got all the shit but you give it corporate wellness as opposed to rehabilitation it builds up the credibility here so i'm introducing him to dr node smith because node already has a curriculum Elijah will have to communicate in with Node. He's already got a curriculum for corporate wellness. And then we can start bringing in this new paradigm tools. I mean, James doesn't even know this yet, but <laughs> I just feel it. I just know it's, you know, that, that knowing. Okay. So do we have everything we need? Is that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much, Elijah. This was really good. Yes, thank you guys. Fantastic. That was great to see and good feedback and uh, awesome. blessings on everything that has to happen. And we shall be in contact. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.